Welcome to ASTR, bringing together the Adventist Church's past and present in order to inspire for the future. Thank you for joining us for episode 11, and thank you to those of you who have become regular viewers and have let us know that you're enjoying the program. In this episode, we share some important information about the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists. Then Dr. Galina Stelle, ASTR's Research and Evaluation Manager, shares the result of a survey that shows how important mission stories are in inspiring church members to give to mission. Then Elizabeth Henry, our Digital Records Manager, talks about the digitization of historic Adventist records that we do in ASTR, before Meredith Carter, editor of the annual statistical report, concludes this episode by sharing statistics about Adventist missionaries. But first, let's look at what happened this week in Adventist history. On May 28 in 1925, Ruth Thorger was born in Copenhagen. Raised an Adventist and a graduate of Weilefjord, the Adventist secondary school in Denmark, Ruth began working as a coal porter or literature evangelist as we would say today. She met a Danish coal porter, Louis Christian Nielsen, who was a year older than Ruth, and in May 1946, they were married. Louis was a pastor in the East Danish Conference for five years and a daughter, Anita, was born to them in this time. In 1952, the Nielsens moved to the United States, where Lewis studied, initially at Emmanuel Missionary College, today's Andrews University, from which he graduated with a BA in religion in 1954. Then he moved on to the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary, at that time located in Washington, D.C., from which he graduated first with an M.A. in 1955, then a Bachelor of Divinity degree in 1957. That same year, Ruth, Lewis, and Anita went as missionaries to the West African Union Mission, where they served 10 years. Lewis worked first as chaplain of Bekwai Training School in Ghana, then as a professor of religious knowledge at Nigerian Training College, where Ruth taught at the Associated Adventist School. Lewis was later principal of the Adventist Secondary School in Sierra Leone. Two sons, Anna and Frank, were born to them in Africa, the first in Ghana, the second in Nigeria. In 1967, the Nielsens returned to Andrews University, where Lewis took an MA in theology before beginning studies for a D-min. He took up a position as a high school teacher. Ruth, meanwhile, had taken a BA from Andrews, and in 1968, she became an instructor in the Home Economics Department of the University. She became an assistant professor in 1970 and served in the department for another seven years, for the last year as department chair. She had meanwhile taken a master's degree from Michigan State University. In 1977, Ruth and Lewis returned to Denmark, where they served at Skodsborg Sanitarium. Ruth was on the faculty of the physiotherapy training school attached to the sanitarium, while Lewis was pastor of the Scottsborg Church, chaplain of the sanitarium, and a Bible teacher in the physiotherapy school. In 1981, Ruth and Lewis returned to Africa, where Lewis served as director of the Gambia Mission Station. In 1991, they moved countries in Africa, accepting a call to serve at Bugema College in Uganda, where Lewis was academic dean and Ruth taught home economics. In 1992, Ruth and Lewis returned to the United States, where they retired in North Carolina. Ruth outlived Lewis, but passed away last year on February 18, 2022. Also on May 28, but in 1930, five years after Ruth's birth, the 42nd General Conference session convened in San Francisco. The session is important in Adventist history for several reasons. William A. Spicer retired and was succeeded as General Conference President by the Australian Charles H. Watson. Thus, for the first time since 1903, 
Spicer was not one of the three executive officers of the General Conference. Furthermore, Watson was the first citizen of a country other than the United States to become General Conference President. Cecil K. Myers and John L. Shaw continued as GC Secretary and Treasurer, respectively. Also significant about the 1930 session is the number of national delegates to the session, that is, delegates who were drawn from the population of the countries they represented as opposed to missionaries. There had been a handful of national delegates to sessions over the preceding 21 years, but there were enough in 1930 that, as you see here, a photo of the group was taken. In addition, they were prominent in the photo taken of all those attending the session, which you see here. You can see right in the center, in the first two rows, the delegate from Korea and the two delegates from Fiji. Also in the front row are the delegates from Mexico and Peru. 1930 can figuratively be seen as the moment when worldwide mission stopped being an aspiration for the Seventh-day Adventist Church and instead became a reality. And that was this week in Seventh-day Adventist history. are the Seventh-day Adventists? Who took the Adventist message to India? Or who took it to other countries? What is the history of Adventist universities, hospitals, and other institutions around the world? My great-grandparents were missionaries to Lake Titicaca. Where can I find information about them? What if we could have reliable answers to these and other questions at our fingertips? This is now possible using the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists online. The Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, or the ESTA online, is a global church project that includes an estimated 8,500 entries, accompanied by photographs, media, and original documents in an online portal accessible to anyone. The ESTA online is a great tool for those seeking to do research and learn more about the Seventh-day Adventist church around the world, and also for those looking to witness to others. The ESTA online is the Adventist church's first online reference work available to the public since June 2020. This free website will be periodically updated and expanded. Some people may ask why a new encyclopedia? Why not just update the current encyclopedia? Well, almost 25 years after the second revised edition of the Seventh-day Adventist Encyclopedia and more than half a century after publication of the first edition, the Seventh-day Adventist Church needs a new reference work but it also needs an online encyclopedia that includes all the possibilities of the digital age and enables interactive engagement by readers. The ESTA draws on the expertise of hundreds of scholars, teachers, and authors worldwide. About 30 assistant editors and research assistants and 25 consultant editors from all 13 divisions, the Middle East and North Africa field, and the General Conference work on the encyclopedia. One of the main goals of this encyclopedia is to be a missional tool to reach the world with the Adventist message and highlight the missional challenges still remaining in order to reach the world. Other goals are to supply reliable information on Adventist history, crucial events and themes, organizations, entities, institutions, and people, strengthen Adventist identity in a fast-growing worldwide movement, heightening awareness of distinctive doctrinal and prophetic beliefs, and provide a reference work for those new to the Adventist faith, mature in the faith, and not of the Adventist faith, to learn about all aspects of Adventism. All ESTA articles are signed and include notes and sources. The goal of each ESTA article is to be primary source-based, honest, open, comprehensive, and rigorous, representative of the diversity and richness of Adventism, and fully understandable to both church members and the public. Thousands of articles are completed and in writing, but many topics still need authors. If you want to suggest a new topic or contribute an article, Please check the Get Involved page for the author guidelines and write to encyclopedia at gc.adventist.org 
encyclopedia.adventist.org, representing the diversity and richness of Adventist heritage. Have you ever dreamed about being a missionary in a far foreign country? Are you interested in cross-cultural adventures? Or are you passionate about bringing the good news about Jesus to those who never heard about him? If so, what has stimulated your interest in the missionary activities? Have you read a book or seen a movie? Or have you had a chance to meet or talk with missionaries of modern times and listen to their breathtaking stories? Interestingly, research carried out by STR shows that stories of missionaries matter. They impact us by unfolding the sacrifices missionaries and their families make and by making it known that God's providence is still at work, especially in difficult situations. The stories also help us be more sacrificial. The mission offering study conducted in 2015 in the North American division by Dr. Spilter Chinchala, Renette Drum, and Dwayne McBride, under the supervision of the General Conference Office of Archive Statistics and Research, identified the role mission stories play for church members and the importance for making a mission offering more personal. One of the main questions in the study was what motivates Adventist church members to give to world missions? The participants reviewed a long list of possible motivators. About two-thirds, 63%, reported Sabbath school mission stories and stories published in the Adult Bible Study Guide, the Sabbath school lesson quarterly, were either the most effective or somewhat effective methods to promote mission giving with 27% and 23% respectively, seeing them as the most effective motivators. However, by far, personal stories shared by church members or former missionaries were the most important motivating factors. About 80% saw, to one degree or another, their effectiveness, with 43% considering them as the most effective motivator. It is also important to know that materials mailed to members' homes were seen as the least effective approach, with 38% of the respondents indicating this method was not effective. Basically, this response may reflect that increasingly material received through the mail is ignored. This may reflect our internet age or that home mail is so extensive that material sent to members' homes gets lost amid the volume of other mail. Thus, the data consistently showed that the personal stories of missionaries are by far the best and most effective motivators for mission giving. Even in this age of texting and tweeting, a personal story and a personal touch has a power to move and to motivate. The research team's correlation analysis revealed that this is especially true for first-generation Adventists. Many respondents in the study were not aware of the needs in the mission field or of the impact of the contributions of missionaries. There is a need of personal connections to the mission projects. This can be done by a variety of ways. Plan missionary visits to local churches and camp meetings. Do mission trips with your church members and youth. Ask members to share their experiences and stories from these mission trips. Adopt some mission projects by your local church. Use live streaming to tell stories from mission fields, etc. The data suggests that even in the social networking age, personal connections and a personal story about a mission is the best motivator for sustained or increased mission offering giving. And although we live in the 21st century, the need of people who are willing to go outside their comfort zone to bring the good news about Jesus is still present. We need to hear their stories and we need to support them. Visit the Adventist Research website, that's adventistresearch.info, to know more about this study. 
In a previous episode, we spoke about the scanning equipment used by the Office of Archive Statistics and Research, ASDR, to digitize records in our holding, much of which have been made available on the online archive website. To summarize, we use three types of scanners, high-speed scanners with document feeders to scan loose-leaf documents up to 11 by 16, a book scanner to scan bound books, including pamphlets, diaries, and books up to B3 size, and a flatbed scanner to scan photos or loose leaf documents too fragile to go through the high speed scanners up to 8.5 by 14. But what do we do when the records we need to digitize do not fit in any of these scanners? We found ourselves in this very situation in the winter of 2023. We encountered materials, older ledgers from 1915 to 1917 that did not fit our scanners. These books measured 15.5 inches by 17.5 inches and did not fit our scanners by just half an inch. What did we do, you may wonder, to digitize this content in spite of the scanners being too small? Well, we approached another general conference department, in this case the communications department, to request assistance to complete the scanners project. The communication department created a setup whereby they were able to capture the high quality images of the ledgers. The conditions needed to produce these high quality images were as follows. Good lighting to ensure that the color of each resulting images come out consistently and well balanced. Two, a stable surface on which to place the book. Three, good camera setup in order to simplify post-processing and increase the quality of the images taken. The camera is mounted to a tripod and is configured to take pictures of the ledger straight on, that is, parallel to the page. Once the conditions have been met, we are ready to take pictures of the book. Once the pictures have been taken, post-processing is done to ensure that all the pages have been scanned, are facing the correct orientation, and are merged in the correct order into one file. We hope this peek into what goes into digitizing material was interesting. Welcome to the latest statistical nugget from the ASTR data collection and publication team. In this episode's statistical nugget, we will explore the work of Seventh-day Adventist missionaries, the history, and the current data. For nearly 150 years, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has been focused on spreading the gospel and the soon coming of our Savior through our missionaries. It is our belief that as long as there is even one person that doesn't know the love of God, we will need missionaries to spread the good word. Therefore, everyone has the opportunity to know and love God and accept Him as their Savior. Did you know that J.N. Andrews was the first official Adventist missionary, boarding a ship for Europe in 1874? Since then, thousands more have left the comfort of their homes to unfamiliar and even dangerous areas of the world to further the message of the gospel to all people. In fact, in 2019, there were 3,384 new missionaries and 7,360 total missionaries serving worldwide. Unfortunately, these figures dropped dramatically by 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic to merely 1,206 new missionaries and 5,106 total missionaries serving worldwide. We are hopeful that these figures will rebound and be showcased positively in Table 16 of the upcoming 2023 Annual Statistical Report, which will include 2022 statistics. You may ask, where do these missionaries come from and how are they accounted for? The missionaries come from all 13 divisions and the four attached fields to the General Conference. Many of these missionaries are persons and families traveling to other countries and or continents to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But many others take on local assignments to plan a church or lead interest groups. These assignments are usually nominated calls, which are delivered from the calling organization through the General Conference Secretariat. The annual statistical report collects statistics on three major missionary groups. International Service Employees, or ISEs for short, Adventist Volunteers, and Global Mission Pioneers. However, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has many other missionary programs, which include tent makers, contract workers, 
1,000 missionary movement workers, pioneer missionary movement workers, Waldensian students, and other intra-division and union workers. Adventist missionaries serve in many vital fields, such as education and healthcare. And with the implementation from the General Conference of a mission refocus, many more missionaries will be involved in mission work that gets them involved in a more direct contact with local people and church planting. Missionaries offer Bible studies, literacy courses, training, development and relief activities, church planting, and leadership training, and in many more ways to spread the love of God. Our dedicated missionaries are working tirelessly to serve in any capacity to ensure that every person has the opportunity to know God's love so that they can experience the joy of salvation. For more information on available missionary opportunities, visit the Service Opportunities tab at secretariat.adventist.org. And for more information on world statistics of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, go to adventiststatistics.org. That's adventiststatistics.org. Thanks so much for joining us again on this episode of ASTR, where this time we have put the spotlight on the topic of missionaries. Join us again in two weeks' time for the next episode as we continue to bring you the most interesting and inspiring content from the Adventist Church's past and present. See you then.